Hello and welcome back. So this has been a crazy week in fantasy. A lot of weird things are happening and it's very difficult to use the data to make better decisions this week because a lot of crazy stuff has happened. Did anyone see Ryan Nugent Hopkins putting up seven points in two games thus far in the week? Two goals, five assists, outscoring McDavid. I'm playing against Nugent Hopkins. So this was a nice tactical move by my opponent, Lake Mohawk Moose, picking up Nugent Hopkins and basically not only canceling out McDavid, but outshadowing him. Uh, McDavid four assists and a minus two, but that's not bad uh, in general. But Nugent Hopkins, seven points in two games. How do you beat that? There's a couple of other players doing some nice things. Justin Falk, uh, three-point game earlier this week. Dylan Larkin, a three-point game. Perron with a hat trick. Uh, you have Brock Besser playing some really good hockey right now. Uh, so if he's available on your wire, he's been putting up some good numbers. Uh, Johansson in Minnesota. Minnesota is just a beast. They're just rolling uh, over everybody right now. They beat Colorado last night. An excellent performance from my boy, Philip Gustafson. I've been riding him for most of the year now, and he's been uh, one of the guys I talk about all the time on the channel for good reason. Kyle Palmieri, uh, he's still producing. He didn't produce last night. Nobody really scored last night uh, in either of those games that you would have expected to score. Uh, and Paul Mary has been one of the offensive guys on Long Island, so uh, he's been playing pretty well. Sam Reinhart was dropped in one of my leagues. He's had a couple of points here, three points in two games. Lawson Krauss, that's an interesting one because uh, they do have some games this week at home, uh, Friday and Saturday. So if you're looking for that Friday, Saturday, uh, so most of you are going to have your Saturday booked up. But if you need it, because you know, you're either going to try to plan for Sunday or Friday, to get an extra game in. Arizona is really good at home. Even if they lose the game, they're probably going to put up points. To, um, Dallas is very good defensively, but uh, if there's guys like Schmaltz, guys like Kraus, uh, Keller's probably not on your wire. Barrett Hayton is still playing really well, uh, but those kind of guys for these two games could be a nice play. Buffalo has these two games. If you're looking for a goalie stream, uh, we'll come back to the goalies in just a second, but Devin Levi is getting his first NHL start against the Rangers. So one of two things is going to happen. Either he's going to shut out the Rangers or he's going to get lit up. And if you, whichever side of the fence you think is going to happen, uh, whichever side you fall on, uh, you could either pick up Rangers for this, uh, for the game tonight against the, De uh, the Devils down here, huge matchup, Rangers, Devils, uh, potential playoff preview probably is a playoff preview and then the Rangers go and go to Buffalo and have to face Devin Levi and they usually get goalied by uh, a guy coming in and playing his first game so that could be a nice little pickup another little uh, thing I wanted to mention I don't know if he's here but Kachekov has been sent down to Chicago which basically guarantees that Antti Ranta will start either against Montreal on Saturday or against the Islanders on Sunday. So that could be a nice spot start for you. If you need a goaltender for the weekend, Antti Ranta is probably going to get one of those two starts. Uh, another thing that we'll look at in just a second, Ottawa goaltending, Sogard, he's been picked up. He's potentially playing tonight. It's not confirmed, but why don't we just skip over to that right now? So team defense, over the last uh, week or so, uh, last 10 days, uh, these are the teams that have been giving up the most goals and then the least goals. So we'll start with the most goals. These are the teams that you want to target this weekend for your matchups. If you have an, a chance to pick up uh, somebody from a team who is playing against one of these teams at the top here, that's what you want to look for. Columbus giving up an average of six goals against per game. They are horrendous. They're tanking for Bedard. Anaheim, same type of thing, 4.75. Obviously, that's a big jump. 1.25 goals against per game. Worse is Columbus than Anaheim. Uh, Chicago's poorest defensively right now. San Jose finally won a game. Uh, I believe they were winless in 9 or 10, and then they finally beat the Winnipeg Jets. That's a whole different conversation. If you own Jets, uh, I had to drop Ehlers because they are just trending in the wrong direction. Florida's giving up a ton of goals despite the fact that they are still trying to make a playoff push, and they got a huge win last night against Toronto. St. Louis, they are scoring a bunch, but they are also giving up a bunch. So... This could be uh, something to take note of. If Edmonton's going to play Campbell, Campbell set the Oilers record. It might be an NHL record too for most wins when allowing four goals or more in a game. So every game he's giving up four and somehow winning the game. So keep that in mind if you're trying to start Campbell, but also keep it in mind if you're playing against Edmonton. 
they will probably win the game, but they will also let in a bunch of goals, especially if Campbell's playing. But if we look at the bottom of this list, so this is interesting too. The Devils, they're, uh, the Devils and the Leafs are giving up a lot more goals and Vegas as well. They're all typically good defensive teams that are giving up a lot more. So if you have uh, Vanacek or Schmid and you're looking for another start, maybe go elsewhere. Uh, if you have uh, some of the, the Knights goalies like Quick or whatever, maybe think about dropping them uh, just for the remainder of this week if you need to get over the top for your, your matchup. If you look at the other end of the spectrum, these are the goaltenders that you want to target. Obviously, Minnesota, Gustafson, incredible last couple of games, uh, 42 safe performance last night. Boston's goaltending is owned up for the most part. Varlamov could uh, potentially be available for you. I don't know what kind of game he's going to get into, uh, whether it's Tampa or Carolina, but they do have that road back-to-back, so he will probably play one of those games, and they are a really good defensive team. So you could think about Varlamov. The Flyers are actually very good defensively right now over the last 10 days. And obviously, Carter Hart is probably owned up. He was in the 60s last time I checked. But Sandstrom came in and played the other night. He did pretty well, so you could potentially target him. Yarrow Halak will probably go uh, tomorrow night against Buffalo uh, for the Rangers. So you could target that as your spot start. Uh, you also have Colorado, who's giving up a lot fewer goals against per game. I don't believe Franco's is back, so I do think it's Johansson uh, if they... Uh, give him a start, but I doubt they will. They only have the one more game this week, which does kind of stink if you own Colorado players that they're only playing three times. They did have two of the light nights, but they play this heavy Saturday against Dallas. Dallas will be on the second half of a back-to-back, so that might be a little bit more favorable, but I would imagine that Georgiev gets that game. Uh, And then you have Ottawa, 2.4 goals against per game in the last 10 days. That is encouraging because as we just saw, uh, you can probably get Sogard at 12% ownership, um, 941 save percentage last game, 931 the, the game before that, 943 the game before that. So Sogard has picked it up after three really bad, five really bad starts uh, where he was sub 900 save percentage. In the last three, he's been a lot better. So you could potentially pick up Sogard if you need it. Uh, let's look at Ottawa's schedule a little bit because that is important to note. They play Philly. This game should be low scoring, as we just saw. Both of those teams are at the bottom in terms of uh, on this list. Uh, Philly, very low scoring. Ottawa, very low scoring. Uh, Goals against, at at least. So that should be a game where you could get some goaltending. Sogard, if he's in there, that would be a nice start. But this game right here, right now, uh, as we just saw with the teams that are giving up goals left and right, Ottawa is playing Columbus on Sunday. That could be the game that makes or breaks your championship week. If you can add sends, guys like Jake Sanderson, who's now quarterbacking the power play alone, Chikrin's out, Shabbat's out, uh, Travis Hamanick, he's his value increases for sure, and anybody that you can pick up from the sends that would potentially be in a favorable role. Obviously, the top six is mostly owned up, so it is tough to find some value there, uh, but a guy like Sanderson would be a really nice play for Sunday because they're playing against the worst defensive team in the league over the last 10 days. But you also have... Uh, a matchup here for Calgary against Anaheim. That could be a goal fest uh, if you're looking for Calgary ads. Guys like Manjapani, guys like Coleman, guys like Backland. Uh, some of those players are available for you on the wire, and they could make or break your season in a favorable matchup against Anaheim. This is what you want to look for uh, if you're in need of that start on Sunday. Start planning now because people are going to start grabbing those guys quickly because they're going to be, uh, there's going to be a mad scramble to try to add a bunch of players on Sunday. So keep that in mind. Um, Winnipeg playing New Jersey. New Jersey's trending in the wrong direction, but I don't see Winnipeg scoring a ton against New Jersey. They've just been anemic offensively lately. But these are just some of the trends that I've noticed. We're going to take a look at the player and goalie hubs in just a second, just to find a couple of other trends to talk about, because there is some interesting stuff going on right now. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, the Habs goaltending. Uh, this it was They were a little bit higher up when I had the dates a little bit different, but Montreal's been uh, a lot tighter defensively. You can see them tied with Carolina here. That's kind of unusual. So uh, if you can, uh, they do have a game tonight. I believe they have one more game this week. Uh, yes, you can see here. So they got Florida and then they got Carolina. I wouldn't want to start anybody against Carolina, but this Florida game... Uh, could be interesting. Florida's on the second night of a back-to-back, so they could potentially 
uh, shut it down. You know, typically what I would say with back-to-backs, teams either start slow or they end slow. So they can only put together maybe 40 minutes of a 60-minute game. Sometimes they come out flat and they turn it on late. Sometimes they come out hot and they fade at the end. So maybe, you know, keep that in mind if you're looking for a spot start. I usually don't recommend Canadians goaltenders, but they're playing a lot better uh, defensively lately. But let's turn to the goalie hub first, and we'll look at some trends there, and then we'll move to the player hub. So back at the goalie hub, this is the change from the 26th to the 30th. We're doing the midweek update, so it's not a full week that you're getting. Uh, But some interesting trends, if we go to the top, Georgiev fading a little bit. Uh, you have Copley fading because of that 7-6 game on Sunday that he was in in, uh, in net for. Uh, that's definitely going to hurt his stats, but he is probably going to play tonight, and he's probably going to get one other start as they have a back-to-back on the weekend, and they are a very good defensive team. Uh, LA is one of my favorites to come out of the West, so if you're looking for a start, if Copley's there, I still think of him as a good goaltender on a good team that you could potentially uh, get two starts out of from now until Sunday. Stuart Skinner uh, is the better of the two Edmonton goaltenders, but he's trended in the wrong direction this past week. Bobrovsky, uh, Bobrovsky has an illness right now, non-COVID. He should play tonight, uh, but in his absence, uh, down here at the bottom, Alex Lyon taking a massive jump because of that game he played last night. That was a really good performance. Uh, as we go back to the top, you can see some of these other guys. Markstrom trending up over the last uh, couple of days here. Varlamov, uh, another type of player that you could get access to. Uh, as I just mentioned, they do have the back-to-back this weekend. Uh, DeSmith going in the wrong direction. Jari, I'm not sure what his health situation is right now, but uh, they've been teasing that he could come back at any moment. They do have two more games left, so it'll be interesting to see who gets the net. Uh, both of those guys have been trending in the wrong direction, and so has Pittsburgh. They just don't have it this year. Uh, they tried to take a, a stab at the, the wild card here. Uh, New York has, uh, the Islanders have kind of increased their separation from Pittsburgh. So it's looking like they're battling for that second wild card with uh, the Florida Panthers. So that will be interesting to watch as the week unfolds. Stay lock going the wrong way. Obviously Chicago, uh, one of those bottom feeder teams. Grubauer is potentially not ownable or not rosterable uh, right now. Both goaltenders are struggling in Seattle. That's costing them points in the standings. That's going to be something to look at in the offseason because they haven't had much success with Grubauer in two years, and they have had a little bit of success with Jones, but he's faded a lot. Um, Bennington going the wrong way, not that much, though. Uh, Jonathan Quick going the wrong way. Uh, He's still at a a, a season-long 880 save percentage, despite the fact that he's now playing on a much better defensive team. Uh, And then some of these guys, James Reimer going the opposite direction. That's likely from that shutout that he got against Winnipeg, so I don't know if he can continue this, but that's uh, a a positive sign in the right direction if you're thinking about starting him in one of these games this week against Arizona or something. Uh, Jake Allen playing a lot better lately. As we mentioned, the the Montreal goaltending tandem is playing a lot better. And a lot of these guys, um, UPL is not going to get the start this week. As I mentioned, uh, Devin Levi is coming in. Sogard improving in the right direction, and we saw his numbers over the last three games. They're much more... uh, much better and more reflective of his team overall defensively. Uh, Delia with a decent start on Sunday, I believe it was. So his stats improve. Uh, And then you have Hutchinson. I mean, anytime they're starting Hutchinson in Columbus, it's a goal fest. Uh, He didn't play that poorly in the second and third against the Rangers the other night, but uh, three goals in the first period is going to kind of kill any momentum that they might have had. So these are some of the trends in the goaltending. Now let's turn to the player hub and get a sense of some of the guys that are hot and cold over the past couple of days. So we'll start with some of the colder players. Anthony Duclair, it's just not happening for him right now. Uh, He's been trending in the wrong direction, and he just hasn't found his game. That's a difficult injury to come back from with the Achilles. Uh, It ended up costing Pacioretty his season, and now Duclair comes back, and he looks like he's skating fine. He's getting some opportunities on the power play in the top nine, but... Uh, It's just not happening for him the way that it was last year. Obviously, their entire offense isn't as potent as it was last year. Uh, Evangelista, I do not want access to Nashville's offense. They've screwed me twice now. Uh, I sat Soros against Boston for obvious reasons, and then he puts a a Soros, almost gets that shutout. Uh, I thank Pasternak for getting that last-minute goal because I have pasta, and I didn't uh, play Soros, so I didn't want to see him get that shutout. 
Uh, but there's nobody going offensively in Nashville, and Evangelista is one of those guys that's been pulling back a little bit. Uh, same with pretty much anybody that they have in their top nine at this point. They're all younger players. They're still in a playoffs, uh, playoff race, uh, but it is getting difficult to chip away at some of those wins without any offensive firepower. Some of these guys are uh, just trending down a, you know, a tad bit. Guys like Noah Dobson a little bit down. Tom Wilson didn't score or have any impact last night, so he's down a little bit. But overall, nothing crazy down here. If we switch it up and we look at the change interval going the other direction if it comes up here which it doesn't because it's not going to reconnect so we'll try to refresh this for a second so a couple interesting names at the top of this list Travis Hamanick 57 basically a 58 right now he's improved a lot over the past two weeks and on top of that Chikrin is out Shabbat is out so he will start to maybe see some power play two time and he will probably play a more pronounced role in the top four at even strength so that is something to take note of if you're looking for uh, a sends ad for that Sunday game against Columbus or over the weekend in general Travis Hamanick is improving uh, in general and then on top of that the situation around him is uh, favorable for him to get more ice time and potentially have more of an impact and let's just look up what he does uh, partic particularly well because this uh, was brought up in the discord group so he's a, a 96 percentile shot blocker uh, does get a couple of hits, about a hit and a half per game, some shots. The offense hasn't been there, but with an elevated role, that could come. You see Bo and Byram here. He had an incredible week thus far. I believe two goals, one assist, 11 shots. I'm facing him uh, this week, so that's not uh, good news for me. Good news for Lake Mohawk Moose. Bouchard trending in the right direction. Obviously, is the power play one quarterback in Edmonton. That's going to improve your stats. Uh, and then some other guys down here. One guy I wanted to talk about, if I can find him on this list, Brendan Gallagher. Uh, he's got a three-game goal streak right now, single position right winger, but he's available in almost every league. And I don't, uh, typically he was one of those guys who was a hits, uh, shot volume, and goal scorer. The hits aren't there right now. The shot volume is pretty good at 2.3 shots per game, and the goals are okay at 78th percentile, 0.23 per game. Uh, he just hasn't played a lot this year, so there's not a lot to go off of, and everybody's forgotten about him because of that. So if you want to scoop up Brendan Gallagher, he's playing really well right now. I believe he's in the top nine. I'd have to double-check that and just keep an eye on those line assignments uh, throughout the rest of the week. But he is getting an opportunity, and he's got a three-game goal streak nonetheless, so he's been improving and going in the right direction. Uh, some of these other guys, Fix Wolanski, he's a skilled player, very small uh, on that Columbus team. Columbus can still score. They just can't keep the puck out of their net. Uh, so be a little bit cognizant of the fact that they do have some matchups that uh, you know are a little bit more difficult. Ottawa has been playing a lot better defensively. They play them Sunday. So uh, keep that in mind for any of the Columbus ads that you're thinking about because they do play Sunday. Uh, Lawson Kraus, we mentioned sort of the Arizona-Dallas uh, matchup on Friday and then San Jose on Saturday. Uh, so Kraus could be a target there. He's on PP2 and getting second line uh, five on five minutes. So it's not necessarily the best situation because he's not PP1, uh, but he has been relatively productive. He had three assists last game. Going down the list here, Vrana still playing really well. Justin Falk, as we saw earlier on the, on the uh, ads and drops list, he was uh, bumped up because of a three-point game earlier this week. Michelli is still producing on uh, Arizona. Some of these guys uh, are, you know, targets. Guys like Morgan Frost, any of those uh, Flyers players that are uh, in the top of their lineup, Farabee, Frost, uh, maybe even Noah Cates, Owen Tippett. Some of those guys are a little bit under the radar. Sammy Blay has been incredible over the past uh, two weeks or so. He's still hot. He had two assists his last game. He's got a five-game point streak, if I'm not mistaken. So Sammy Blay is a hits guy. He's definitely going to get you the hits, but now the offense is coming. I was hoping for this when he was on the Rangers earlier in the year. Uh, I said he, it would take time for him to come back after that knee injury, and it definitely took more time than I thought. Uh, but this is the kind of offense that I was hoping for when he was a Ranger, and it just didn't happen. But now he's comfortable back in uh, St. Louis, and he's been finding some offense in the top nine and getting some power play time as well. And you're getting 3.35 hits per game out of Sammy Blay. Uh, so some really nice uh, bumps in the right direction for some of these guys that are available on your wire. Schmaltz, Palmieri, 
David Perron with the hat trick, that's going to bump him up. Gus Forsling had a nice game last night. Uh, so some of these guys are uh, potential targets for the weekend. But let's take one last look at the schedule before we end this video, just to give you a sense of who you can potentially pick up this weekend. So I don't know about you guys, but my Thursday is more heavy than my Saturday. But both of these days are going to be heavy for you. So you maybe want to find somebody who plays Friday, Sunday, which would be New York and Detroit. Uh, or you could find someone that you can potentially try to squeak in on a Saturday or a Thursday and then uh, one of these other days. So you have a three game uh, segment here. Well, and let's just really quickly update this. There we go. Now we have the blue line as today. So Anaheim does play three in the next four. Uh, they're all Pacific Division matchups and they're all uh, pretty good offensive teams. Obviously, Calgary struggling a little bit, but they do have uh, Toffoli, who's relatively hot. You have Boston. They have a, a three night, uh, three games and four nights schedule here, and they have a really nice game against Columbus tonight. That should be full of offense if they choose to uh, actually try. Uh, they should get a bunch of uh, production out of the big guys, guys like McAvoy, Pasternak, DeBrusque. Uh, Marshan's been quiet. Uh, I wonder if he starts to break out soon. You have Carolina. They have a, an interesting schedule here because it's three and four, and there's some winnable matchups against Detroit and Montreal. This Islanders game should be tough, and it should be tight checking. So that should be low scoring because the Islanders are typically a good defensive team, and they have Sorokin, who they're probably going to start for this one. Uh, Columbus, I wouldn't want access to most of their guys against Boston uh, and against some of these uh, opponents. Obviously, Florida is giving up a lot more goals lately, uh, and Ottawa isn't. But if you had to, you could go to Boone Jenner. If you had to, you could go to Marchenko. He's still PP1. So there are some options for you if you need that three and four, but this is a very tough game against Boston. Detroit, uh, they have three tough games. This one's maybe not as tough, but it is a back-to-back a -back with travel involved. Uh, LA, they have the, uh, the three Pacific Division teams, Edmonton, Seattle, and Vancouver. Vancouver is no longer an easy game. Demko's found his game. And that should be uh, a lot more difficult than it would have been earlier in the season. Uh, there could be some goal scoring against Seattle, though, with their goaltending issues. Uh, Seattle's usually a good defensive team, but they do have some goaltending issues, despite the fact that they only give up about 25 to 30 shots per game. Uh, you have the Devils. This is a huge, huge game against the Rangers for not just uh, a playoff preview, but the Rangers could gain home ice advantage if they win this in regulation. Uh, and then depending on how the rest of the season shakes out, that's going to be up for grabs from here on in. The two teams are very tight. That should be a really interesting game tonight. I'm very excited for that one. They do have a real nice matchup against Chicago on Saturday. Uh, so that could potentially produce some goals if you're looking for a devil's ad. This game, I don't know what to expect. There should be some good goaltending on the part of Hellebuck. Uh, and... The Devils shouldn't be able to score a ton, but Winnipeg has been very frustrating lately, so I don't know what to expect out of Winnipeg from now on. Um, the Rangers have one of the better schedules because they play Friday and Sunday. So they play tonight if you need that ad for tonight. Then they have this game against Buffalo and Devin Levi. Uh, make of that what you will. And then they do have this game against the Capitals. Uh, and some of their guys play really well against the Caps. Guys like Zibanejad usually score. Uh, there's a number of uh, players that you can get access to in the, you know, the kid line is usually available for you. Philip Hedo would be probably the top target for the kid line, and he's been one of the highest trending players. If we can look here, he's right at the top. Tons of ads. So if you're looking to get Hedo for the weekend, you might want to have to you know think about it today. Same thing with Keandre Miller. Uh, those two guys, people are planning for that ahead of time, so they're thinking about it already. Maybe jump out in front of that. Uh, then you have all these teams play three and four, but they're all varying degrees of difficulty. Uh, we mentioned Ottawa. This should be a low-scoring game. This should be a low-scoring game. This should be a goal fest. Uh, for Philly, this should be low-scoring. This should be a little bit higher scoring on the second night of a back-to-back -back for Buffalo. And then they have some travel involved going to Pittsburgh. Who knows what to make of that game? Pittsburgh is an enigma right now. Uh, same thing with Pittsburgh. This should be a lower scoring game because of Nashville's ability to defend and they almost shut out the Boston Bruins somehow. Uh, then Pittsburgh plays Boston later in the week. That should be a very difficult game. And then they have this Flyers matchup as well. St. Louis has a really nice uh, game tonight against Chicago. That should produce some offense and goals for both sides. 
Uh, so if you're looking for an ad just for tonight, this Chicago-St. Louis game should have a bunch of goals in it. These two shouldn't. These should be very tight defensive games. Uh, and then you have Toronto. They do play Detroit on Sunday. That could be a nice favorable matchup if you're looking for yarn croak, if you're looking for uh, one of the depth defensemen to get you some hits and blocks in that game, something like that. Uh, this back-to-back -back could be uh, something that you pay attention to. And then Winnipeg does play Friday, Sunday. So they do have... Uh, a schedule that might work for you. It's just a matter of who's going to play, who's going to produce in those games because the top guys have not been doing it. Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, Nick Ehlers, some of those guys have been really quiet lately. So this will be uh, interesting to see what happens. But if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments section below. I don't know how well I'll be able to answer them because this has been a crazy week in fantasy. There's not a whole lot that's going uh, as scripted in terms of teams doing what they usually do, players performing the way that they usually do. So there's not a lot of uh, predictability in this particular week. If this is your championship week, I wish you all the best. Don't forget to set your lineups, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.